after reviewing all of your feedback from recent calls, we got to pivot a bit on today's call and provide the club members with a rundown of the top 10 stocks in the portfolio that we would purchase right now if we were not restricted or if we did not already own large positions. Think of these as a starting point for those of either new to the club or have been looking to get into new names because you kind of miss what we have. All right. Before we get to it, we want to remind members that real portfolio management, which is what this club is designed to teach you, is all about finding the right balance between analysis and timing, conviction, and maybe most important, humility. This balance is why we have taken a long-term approach toward building a portfolio. As oddities within the broader market or macro economy that impact individual stocks in the short term eventually do smooth out, allowing company fundamentals to rule the trajectory of a stock over the long, long term. We understand that individual investors simply do not have the resources that big fun, uh, hedge funds do that allow them to trade in and out of names on a daily or even hourly basis. We are so not that. But we cannot ignore timing. We all know it is the secret sauce required to get the most out of our investments. And that's what we want to, do, to address today with our top 10 list. We always aim to get the best entry point on a stock as possible, which is why we scale into positions over a period of time, many covered by almost all my books, even including the first one, Real Money, after, of course, uh, well, you know, street addict. Uh, we allow ourselves room to play against the macro factors in the market. You can read more about uh, this idea in our forum. Please go to the forum, where we directly answer club members' questions for everybody. But timing is especially tricky for the trust, given all the myriad restrictions that we must abide by. And this is why we created the club format to tell you everything we'll be doing if we can't uh, do it at that moment in time, because the, unfortunately the trust does not reflect, well, it barely reflects at times what we're telling you to do because of the restrictions. And that's just too bad. I'd like to make more money for charity, but I got to play by the rules. Even though we're not always able to act as nimbly as we would like, our goal is to provide you with as much information as possible so that you can be nimble in the way that we would like to be in an ideal world. In this fragile market, and it is fragile after I gave you the three bears, you know that, the ability to be nimble is something that cannot be overlooked, and trading in recent weeks has provided some great opportunities for you to capitalize. This is where our top 10 list comes into play, providing you with good entry points right now with upside in the near term as well as the power to continue growing into the future. We've chosen names from different sectors to provide you with the opportunity to diversify. I know we want that, and, uh, not only in terms of industry exposure, but also when it comes to short-term versus long-term catalysts. All in all, this is my blessing to you to purchase my 10 favorite names in the portfolio right now. So without further ado, pencil and paper, please, here they go. All right, the EZU, which is the European ETF, ABGO, which is Broadcom, a Google, we like the L kind for voting rights, Abbott, Danaher, TJX, yep, we're sticking by it. Comcast, my other employer. Newcore, pre announce or not. Key, a bank, even though we know that the banks are trading down. And then MMP, our loan oil play that has big yield that I want you in. Now, I'm going to go through each of these to give you some more background and, more importantly, explain why we like each right now. But I also encourage members to reread our recent bulletins to always stay on top of our analysis as our bulletins are where we piece together the driving forces of the market to establish a narrative across the whole market. Of course, the bulletins are much more easy to access since we changed and did the redesign, which again was something you asked for. And we, we gave you the votes. What you did, what you told us to do, we did. Uh, these, these names you're looking uh, can be found in recent trade alerts, bulletins, and of course, investment ideas. And don't forget our roundup at the end of the week. All right, first up is the portfolio's only ETF, and that's the EZU. That's the iShares MSCI Eurozone ETF. This is an unhedged European markets ETF, meaning you gain exposure to movements in the euro currency as well as the European market overall. As we've mentioned in the past, we think Europe is getting ready to really pick up speed. And we want that exposure, not just to the stocks, but to the euro. We don't want to miss out on building strength in the currency. I think the currency is real. Most important, we want broad exposure to companies based on the EU, as we do not want to be specifically tied to a sector or region that may be lagging the entire recovery. And that's why we like the EZU. It provides a passive way to gain exposure to the European market and the euro currency without the need to bet on one specific company that may turn out to be the wrong one. It provides for diversity across companies as well as regions, does not require individual investors to follow trading overseas throughout all hours of the day. That's why I like it. I just came back from Italy, by the way. I feel like the euro is so cheap, and Italy is really coming back. But that's Spain's coming back. 
France is coming back, Germany's already been back. Moving on to the specific companies we like, we will start with the most recent addition to the portfolio, Broadcom Limited, symbol AVGO, which is, oh, geez, look at this thing. I mean, this thing can't be studied. It's 242. Um, we just added this name down about 10 points from here, but that's okay. That's okay. Because remember, if it's like a 24, think of it as a $24 stock divided by 10, you've missed a point, okay? That's all. You've missed a point and a half. Um, and we, that's how I always did it. When you have a $240 stock divided by 10, you realize that maybe you're not so off, even if it's up 10. We continue to think it's still attractive at these levels. The company develops, designs, and globally supplies semiconductor devices across a bunch of segments, including wired, wireless, and enterprise. You can read our initiation analysis from last week for more details. Long term, we like Broadcom as it's a diversified semiconductor uh, company, not necessarily hamstrung by the predictable cyclicality of other more siloed players. Broadcom can benefit from the increasing worldwide demand for data. Uh, in the next decade alone, data levels are expected to grow by approximately 40% year over year. I think that's a conservative view. A trend that Broadcom can capitalize on thanks to its growing scale. Recall that Broadcom Avago merger, how good it was, and leadership and innovation. Near term, we cannot overlook the eight Avago Broadcom chips that are expected to be inside the upcoming highly anticipated iPhone 8. The benefits uh, of this seem to have been forgotten in the recent tech pullback. Please remember, I am not caring about Apple, which we know we own, about the delay possible of Apple, the iPhone 8. They'll get their consumer product coming. They're not going to release it until it's right. Uh, any pullback in Broadcom would be quite welcome to buy. We're also big fans of Alphabet, G-O-O-G-L. And as we communicated last week when we said, listen, this is the time, uh, fortunately that was about 30 points ago, we think the recent weakness has made for a very attractive entry point. Yes, the stock may have been hit by the news that the European Commission is slapping the search giant with a record $2.7 billion fine. Uh, but the self was exacerbated by what was going on in the broader tech space. Regardless, every time the stock takes a hit, it bounces back. And that's simply because it has got so much going for it, as we have written over and over again in recent bulletins. Remember when all the advertisers were pulling out of YouTube? All oh, of I put quotes around that. Back in March, sending the stock down 40 points a matter of weeks. What an opportunity that was. Very few pulled out. Some people say no pull out. And as we told members, that's exactly what would happen. One month after hitting the lows, the stock was trading back above the level before the so-called scandal. We all know what happened next. Shares went on a huge run after another dominant quarter from the company, eventually break 1,000 bucks. This recent pullback has the same type of look. Google's fundamentals remain intact. Near term, we love the company's incredibly strong online ad dominance. Longer term, so it's away from just the $660 billion ad market, it's the company's constant push to increase revenue diversity that gets us really excited. That's something Ruth Porat, the CFO, has been pushing. Whether it's Waymo, the dominant autonomous car, YouTube, the, uh, which is just you know, going to be monetized the heck out of in the last, next few years, proprietary machine learning, I've seen it myself, artificial intelligence, been there, looked at, Google Cloud, which they think is, you know, look, a lot of companies are taking Google Cloud, particularly ones, by the way, that Walmart doesn't want to use the Amazon Cloud for, uh, or the hardware business that continues to engender loyalty to the Google brand. Alphabet CFO Porat has had a clearly defined path for success, minimize the companies that lose a lot of money in the uh, moonshots, maximize the ones that make a lot. This is a real powerhouse for the digital age, and the stock is a long-term winner. The dips need to be taken advantage of. Moving right along, let's talk about a healthcare name we recently added, Abbott Labs, ABT. We wish the stock hadn't run up almost immediately after we initiated, so we could have built a large position. But we continue to believe the shares are attractive right here. I, it was up 40 cents today. It would have been, had it been down a dollar, say, we probably would have been in there. Uh, near term, we expect the company to benefit from two recent deals. The Allure deal, which, whose benefits, by the way, are virtually ignored in the current valuation because Abbott fought like heck to not close that deal. At, I think they did fine. More importantly, St. Jude, whose medical device business is adding new life to uh, Abbott and will make it compete against Medtronic. Don't believe, by the way, these stories which say that it's cobbled by recalls. Do believe the fact that the FDA is going to give it a little more leeway. Looking further out, the company has a strong pipeline. We'll be facing easier year-over-year -year comps moving forward, one of the reasons why we picked it up now. Lapping some difficult issues in Venezuela, facing easier compares for China's nutrition segment. As a bonus, the company has increased its dividend payout for 45 consecutive years, generating nearly 70% of its revenue abroad, offering solid diversification. Boy, I really like Abbott here. I, by the way, the CEO whom I met when I was at Goldman, I don't know, if to date myself 30 years ago, Miles White is amazing. Also in the healthcare sector, here's one that has not worked so far to my satisfaction, or we could have traded it at 86, of course, Danaher. 
While this isn't a pure healthcare stock, some would say it's a bit of industrial. They spun off a lot of their most industrial cyclical business. It's heavily weighted toward the field of life sciences, which I really like. Remember we had all that gain in Thermo Fisher? This company has a best-in-class management team and benefits from recent acquisitions, almost all of which have had a higher growth rate than the core business. Essentially, as these acquisitions become more and more integrated, their growth will help accelerate the company's uh, overall growth. Even better, the company's actively looking to push into faster-growing markets and increase efficiencies by cutting costs. While the company's dental unit has just been crushing us, darn it all, uh, management has expressed confidence in recent calls that the end markets are improving and the benefits of the Danner business system approach are working their way through the system. I do not think they will let this dental problem. Patterson's got a similar problem. I don't believe that they will let this hurt more than two more quarters. They can't. The stock will be at 100 if they address the problem, correctly at least. We're buyers here, and we want you to be in before the synergies, cost-cutting initiatives, and the turn in dental occurs. Right here at $83. Next up, one we bought some yesterday, TJX. We added it following the big sell-off of consumer discretionary sparked by Amazon, somewhat overhyped. Although the numbers were great for Amazon. Uh, you know, I always endorse buying Amazon. What the heck? Um, I think the TJX right here at $68.96 works. Yes, Amazon's hurting retail. Everybody knows that big department stores simply can't compete with Amazon's prices, ease of use, mobile access. But that is exactly why we love TJX. What hurts the Macy's and the JCPenney's of the world actually helps TJX. The off-price retailer that can purchase premium excess merchandise at a discount and entice shoppers to physically go to stores to find their beloved deals that are below, in many cases, Amazon's prices. Remember, TJX is one of the only stores out there driving positive traffic. Need more proof of the sex success? How about the fact that they are opening up hundreds of locations and a new home concept while its full price competitors are closing down countless locations? TGX is still growing in the number of stores. They need them. Almost nobody else's. Even so, TGX has been negatively impacted by what I call the ETFization. Again, get rich carefully. Talks about this of the markets. Getting lumped in with the baskets of struggling retailers and pulls it down too. The silver lining. This is a bargain for those willing to give TJX the time to prove the success of their business model, especially in relation to the broader group. I, there's one that's opening up right next to me. My wife is furious. She says, well, how about a local store? No, they know that the neighborhood I live in in Brooklyn is booming. Okay, so they want to put one up. They just put another one up not that, a couple blocks from me. That, this is an opportunistic company that people have written off. They're just writing it off. Yes, maybe the multiple's a little too high. I'll take that risk. I'll buy more if it goes lower. Next, we got one familiar for me, Comcast, CMCSA. We've received a lot of questions about this one, given its recent weakness. Investors are concerned that consumers simply aren't willing to pay up for cable services like they once did. Millennials, especially, are e uh, either cutting the cord, including my kids who don't have TV, they just have Netflix, or refusing to sign up in the first place. And the trend appears to be accelerating. I know that. While Comcast is certainly exposed to this dynamic to some degree, we feel the market is discounting the incredible revenue diversity of the company. Don't forget about the film business, Universal, the theme park business, the networks, and please remember uh, the potentially improving regulatory backdrop, which matters a lot. And of course, Wi-Fi. Either way, people aren't consuming less media. They're simply changing the way they consume it. And Comcast is going along with that. The demand for content is actually on the rise, as seen by Netflix's popularity. Between Comcast's fabulous X1 platform, multiple broadcast stations, theme parks, broadband services, content creating movie studio, and now its wireless segment, we're confident that Comcast can weather the cable storm and come out on top, despite rumors that the quarter is going to be weaker. Uh, we're not thrown off by the pullback in a name that was trading more than 21% higher year-to-date back in June. Opportunity. Okay, now let's take one we talked about last quarter, uh, last conference call, Nucorp, NUE, largest steel producer in the U.S. This is a highly diversified company within the steel industry that has, along with every other U.S. steel producer, been hurt by cheap imports from abroad, namely in places like China and Korea. China produces way more steel than they need causing them to dump its excess supply over here for pennies on the dollar. We want to be in, U U in a U.S. steel company because we think President Trump has repeatedly stated that he plans on clamping down on the dumping from overseas. We choose new core because we want the best, and we believe that this value-added name offers the best growth and most uh, diversification for stability. Again, I don't think the, the uh, pre-announcement was anything more than saying, listen, all the steel companies are suffering. This would be a defense initiative if they did it. In other words, the president would use defense, defense law saying it's a national security issue. Uh, if he does it, and I think he's just holding off right now because he's still hoping that the Chinese will help with North Korea, then I think that new core can go up dramatically. I think it can go up either way. All right, two more to go. Let's talk about finan a financial key corp. 
Uh, the company recently received a number of upgrades and in our view is set to push higher. Looking at key is set to benefit from additional Fed rate hikes, despite what Yellen said today, which, makes allow, uh, which allows the bank to immediately make more money off its deposit, which accepts, don't forget, it's I've been adding deposits like mad because of an acquisition. Growing consumer confidence also makes for a potentially stronger leading market in the super regional space. We chose Key as the financial to buy years that had the best quarter last qu uh, earnings season and has tangible ways to succeed irrespective of the broader economy thanks to the changing culture and integration of First Niagara. None of the other banks can really buy anything. They're too big. They uh, government went a lot of Finally, I want to mention an energy name taking life in our hands here, right? Magellan Midstream Partners, MMP. While the company's been hit as oil prices have continued to falter, we believe the stock has been unfairly grouped into a broader pool of oil names. As we've explained in the past, and I know this company well, they come on mad money, 85% of the company's revenue is fee-based or less reliant on oil prices. While U.S. overproduction in the Permian may lead to a new normal for oil prices, and you know I don't think the oil prices are going to go much past uh, 50, uh, they're 45, 48 right now, uh, this will harm the E&P companies whose profits are directly related to the price per barrel. It also means there's oil that needs to be transported out of the region. This is more volume and more fee income for fee income. For, Fee income, excuse me, for MMP. So uh, we're sticking with MMP, which has a roughly 5% distribution yield, can ra raise that, paying you to wait as investors pick out the winners from the group's ETF. Again, ETF is hurting this. MMP safe, uh, payout is safe, supported by the company's commitment to a 1.2 uh, times distribution coverage ratio. They do not have the usual incentives as some of the other guys, much more fair common stockholders, and they have space in the Permian pipe to be able to take more oil, which is what's needed. It costs 2 to $3 additional if you don't use their pipe. It's just a good company. So there you have it. Our list of 10 stocks that we would buy right here, right now. We believe these offer diversification, short-term upside, and stability over the long term. That being said, this does not mean we don't like our other holdings. But when looking at trading in recent weeks and understanding that most members of the club cannot own every stock in the portfolio, we believe the time is ripe for these 10 names. If you're just joining the club or looking for a new name to add to the portfolio, these companies are where we would recommend starting your search. As you continue to evaluate your decision, we'll be uh, here posting our analysis to help you along the way. And just to stop for one second, you know, we were going to include Facebook, but in the time since we prepared for the call, Facebook stock has just done and we're on eight points. We were thinking about including Apache, but Apache just bumped very, very nice. I'm not going to say buy it. We were thinking about Southwest on a brutal downgrade. We thought that was stupid. The downgrade made no sense. So we just constantly went over this and come up with those 10.